And how that's going to work is as follows. Let me go ahead. I'm going to still try and get rid of that. Well, maybe not. It's just not going to let me get rid of that shape. Maybe I can get rid of this one. OK, let me get rid of that one. I'll think about why that other one's locked in there, but it doesn't want me to get rid of it. We'll carry it with us. So we have some different parameters. They're driving this little rectangular shape. We have our big uh, kind of donut shape with the carve taken out of it over here. What we want to do now is actually take that over somewhere and start thinking about that more as a building. Okay, So here's how we need to do that. You have your conceptual mass. Let's just go ahead and save that away. That's always a good idea. I haven't saved this thing, so let me go ahead and save this as. And I'll call it uh, my conceptual mass one. OK. Now we'll go through. And what I want to do is create a project file. Because the mass itself is useful inside of a project, but we actually have to sort of bring it into one to go to the next step. So say OK. I got a brand new empty project just waiting to have a building placed inside of it. So again, that was just under the application menu. I say new, choose project. Can in the background, that mass is still hanging around in there. I can switch over to it, and there it is. What I did was, you know, for the project, I just said file under the application menu and said new, and created a new project. Okay, so I just have sort of two things open right now. In fact, let me do this just so that you can sort of uh, see what's going on. Let me go to the view menu. Let me close all the hidden windows. That'll just keep the two windows open, the project window and the. Uh, in fact, let me get rid of this one. That's the building, the original one. Say goodbye to you. Yes, I know. It's sad. OK. And now I can go to the view, and I will uh, just tile them so you can sort of see them both. So here's my conceptual mass over here. And this is the project over there. OK. What I want to do is actually take that conceptual mass, and we're going to load it in, just like we'd load another family into it. And the quickie way to do that, you can come over here and say load, or you can come over to the mass, and you can say let me find it here. It's loaded into the project right there. And when you do that, what it'll do is it'll say, hey, OK, I'll take a look at what projects you have available, and I'll offer to load it into whatever's open right now. It's kind of a shortcut way. So I could go out, pull it off of the hard disk, or I could just do it this way. What it's going to do is try and load it into project two. It's going to tell me that over in project two, I have to do something a little bit special. By default in projects, masses are not visible, because they tend to be oh, like forms that we use to create other objects, but we often hide them away. So we're going to let it enable the masses just so we can see what's going on. Otherwise, we'd have it over there, but it'd be a little bit invisible to us, and it would be confusing. So we wouldn't know what's going on. So I'm going to say, sure, go ahead and enable it. That way, I'll be sure to see it. Over in here, you decide where you want to put it. I'm going to put it on a work plane. So I choose put it on the work plane. Then I'll put it over here and just drop it somewhere on level one. Let me uh, zoom on out a little so you can sort of see better. There it is. I could even do the 3D view if you want to and sort of see it there. There it is. It's sort of sort of get the one-to-one -one correspondence between what's going on. That is the mass that was actually generating all this. This is sort of the shape over in the project file. And really, it's just the exterior boundary of that mass. Okay, But over there in the project file, we're going to do some interesting things to it. Let me zoom that to fit. Okay, So see if you can get your mass over there so we can take a look at it. Now, in your mass that's over there, there's a lot of things we can do. One thing we can do, for example, is we can choose that mass and adjust any of the parameters. And any of the parameters that are available will sort of be tweakable here. So for example, I'll choose that mass. I'll take a look at what the instance properties are. And you'll see that, oh, those things are available. So if I do the building height and I make it like 120 feet, it'll stretch it up. If I change the depth, any of the parameters that I created for it over in the mass family are going to be available here so I can start tweaking around with it. Okay, So that's pretty good. 
Here's what we're going to do, though, in terms of actually sort of understanding it as a building. Masses are great, super. They have a big volume to them, but they don't actually look like floors and walls and all that stuff just yet. We're going to make that transformation now. And to do that, there's a couple things we need to do. One is, come back over here. We need to sort of divide that mass up into floor levels to help it make sense of it. So what we're going to do is load it into the project. We're going to select the mass. Then we're going to do this modify mass, mass floors. But before we do that, we have to make sure we have floor levels available to us. Because if you only have level one and level two, you won't have enough floors to work with. So before we even go to that step, come back over here. And you'll say, back under the Home tab, let's give myself some more floors. Where'd my level tool go? Oh, it's because I'm looking at it in 3D. It doesn't want to do it in this view. Let me go to the elevation view. We'll say the level tool. That trick we learned a little while ago about extra floor levels. I'll just offset and give myself some new floor levels to work with. And again, what I'm doing is really just adding floors that I can subdivide this mass into. You Create as many as you need. Given the shape of my mass right now, I'll even give myself a few extras in case I decide to add a few, add height for this building. Okay, so what do I actually end up with? I've ended up with, what, 17 different floors. Doesn't really matter. You can add as many as you need to. Yes? Sure. So after it's loaded, OK, let's go back over to the floor plan view. OK, if it didn't show up automatically, it's really a, it's sort of a placing of the component. Yeah, if you've already loaded it, say place it. And it should show up in the menu there. OK, and then you can say place it on the work plane. OK, place it on the work plane will put it on level one right now, because that's the default work plane. We can actually place it some other places. Let's see if you can get it in there. OK, now I've created all these different floor levels. I want to use these floor levels to subdivide up my mass. Let's talk about how you might do that. I will choose the mass. And then when you choose the mass, the Modify Mass tab shows up. And if you choose Modify Mass, you'll have this choice right here, Mass Floors. And what does Mass Floors does? You're really just saying, let's divide up that mass into all the different floor levels. So choose that, say Mass Floors. You can choose all the different floor levels you want to include. Shift clicking doesn't work, sadly. <laughs> and when you say OK to that, you'll get something that looks like this. Kay. What we've done is we've just divided this whole thing up into it's really mass floors. So each of those different sort of slices is a floor level. Each of those different slices has some properties to it. So if you want to, let's see if you can get your thing divided into different floor level slices. You can choose a floor level, and it has properties the same way everything else does. It has instance properties that include the perimeter of that floor, the area of that floor, the surface area, as well as the floor volume. There's a whole lot of information that's starting to come out of that shape that we can schedule and start working with to actually understand how big this building is right now. So let's talk about that. We got these ideas. We got the perimeter. We got the floor area. I can see there's about 3,000 square feet, 3,300 on that one floor. Super. But if I want to sort of say how, much, you know, how many square feet are there across the entire building, okay, I could go through and add those all up individually. But that would seem like, oh, such a slow, painful way to do it. We might be able to create a schedule that actually has all the mass floors in it and let it do the adding for me. Yes? Uh, Say what? Well, no, uh, do you have the diamonds? No. Okay, can you tab on them and sort of like uh, select an individual one? And then it's like, uh, then just ch say t um, instance properties. Oh, mine are locked too. No, I can't. They're just reporting right now, they're not actually letting me edit them. <laughs> Because, see, it wouldn't be fair to edit those values. It, the, those values are determined by the shape. So we change the shape, and the values will change. 
So let's create a real simple little schedule and show you how that works. And then we'll adjust the uh, formulas or adjust the shape and see how those things change. So for example, I can say, let's go to view. I will create a schedule. And the type of schedule I'm going to create is going to be the mass floor schedule. So it's under masses and mass floors. So I can choose schedule and quantities. What do I want to schedule? I'm going to schedule the mass floors. And where'd they go? There they are, mass floors. In terms of what I want to schedule, I can put the individual levels. That's probably a pretty good thing. I'm going to focus right now on the floor area. I can put the volume in there too if I was worried about doing some mechanical calculations. But I really want to focus on the floor area more than anything. Okay, now if I want to put a total, I can add a grand total to the schedule and choose to sum up the floor area field. So that's very much like what we did in assignment one, just kind of choosing a field, putting a total line, and summing them all up. And if you choose to create that schedule, you'll get something that looks like this. I can see that right now for this building, I got 186, 548 square foot of building, okay, based on those two different masses. Or that, that one mass that includes all those different parts. Let me go ahead and tile this into view so you can sort of see them all. See, so there's the schedule, and this part over here is the mass. Okay, so far so good? How do now, I make a mass floor? How you make the mass floor? What's that? By picking levels? Yeah, well, after we choose the mass, we say mass floor, and then you choose which levels you want to slice on. Okay, and then it should create them, and then it'll start reporting them. Okay, now here's the deal. You got some feedback over here. You got a shape over here. If this is not exactly the shape we want, if I knew that, for example, I didn't need 186,000 square feet, I needed a 250,000 square foot building. Okay, how could we go through and do that? Just really, depending on whatever parameters you have available, you'll be able to kind of flex and try different things. But I can choose the mass over here. I can choose the instance properties and say, what would happen if instead of being, oh, 60 feet deep, that was actually 85 feet deep? And when I choose that, it'll reshape it over here in the mass, but it'll also go ahead and change it up there in the schedule. Okay, so 80 is not quite enough. I'm only up to 203. So I can start tweaking around and playing some more. Well, oops, I want to be instance properties. What if I went to, oh, 100 feet deep and actually made the building a few floors taller? Okay, what are we up to now? Okay, 230, we're getting closer. So this is sort of the spirit of what we're after. It's really just that you can take a shape, you can control it parametrically, and get different answers out of it. Okay, now, I won't show it today, but let me allude to it for people who are kind of thinking ahead. The fact that you can go through and compute the floor areas and the floor volumes is great in terms of just sort of architecturally understanding that. But if you, for example, were interested about the preliminary cost of the building, okay, we could in our schedule put a calculated value in there and have a very simple sort of formula. The, the number of square feet times, oh, choose your value, $200 a square foot or $100 a square foot, something that's appropriate for the type of construction you have based on your history. Okay, and really quickly come up with a conceptual estimate to sort of see, are we sort of about where we need to be? We can start playing games where we can assign different uses to each of the different floors and have different dollar metrics for each of the different types of uses. So a parking floor costs a different amount per square foot as opposed to an office floor or a retail floor. We can play games like that. But it's really all about, can we at a very high level, now we haven't really placed any specific walls, but can we really work with this form and use the information in it to go through and you know, make design decisions early on okay, about the overall shape before we actually get into the detail? Okay. And that's really what we're trying to drive for. Okay. So that's the big thing I want to leave you with, but let me take you a little bit further in terms of where we go with this. Okay. And that is we got this thing which looks like a big mass floor that's reporting a lot of values. Okay, and that part's good. but we'd really like to take all those surfaces and convert them into real building elements, because that's the next step. OK, 
Okay, and let's show you how you do that real briefly. Okay, you got your mass. That part's looking good. It's divided into floors. That part's looking good. If you choose the mass and we go to the massing and site tab, you'll actually find there's these choices called modeling by face where we can take any surface, any face of that mass, and actually make it into a roof, a curtain wall, a wall, or a floor. Okay, so let's play with it. We could, for example, take the roof, choose a roof type, and say that that wants to be a roof, and in fact, this one over here wants to be a roof. When I choose those, I think I have to get that half too. I can say create the roof, okay, and what did it do? It just actually created a real Revit building element roof at that level. Okay, so as opposed to having to use sketch by footprint, it's just using the definition of the shape to do that. Same thing with floors. Let's go ahead and try that. Let me finish out of here. And we'll say model by face. We can make floor levels. Floor levels, we just choose the floor we want. I want you to be a floor, you to be a floor you to be a floor. And what it's doing is it's creating floor sketches for us. So as we go through now and do these different little floor levels, choose those, we're creating true Revit floors that'll show up in section views, that'll show up in plan views, the real elements. And all we're really doing is using the form to really quickly define them, okay, as opposed to having to sketch them. But they're all parametrically locked together. Okay, one more. Let me go to uh, massing inside again. Let's put some curtain walls on this thing. I'll put a curtain wall on this face, and I'll put a curtain wall on that face. I'll say finish that. Okay, and now I have starting to have something that looks a lot more like a building. Now, once I have this building in shape, I can hide the masses, so I'm just really looking at the building elements as opposed to the masses that drove them. Okay, and that's good. We'll get to that next time. But what I want to leave you with is this notion. If you use your mass shapes and you define things based on the surfaces of the mass shapes, they're still linked to the parameters. So we can go through and change things. So for example, if I choose that mass, and I'm still not quite happy with the values of the parameters. If I still want that to be, oh, 120 by 200, and play with that, I could say, OK. Watch what happens. Okay. The mass changed. The building didn't change. Okay. So we're a little out of sync with each other right now. But I can keep on playing with the masses. No worries, though. If you have something that is defined on the mass, okay, we can reshape it so it applies to the mass. And how do you do that? I can choose the surface. For example, that's the whole curtain system right there. And if I say, update to face. It'll reapply itself so it's on the mass. The same way over here, I can take that roof, update it to face, and it'll move it down to the mass. Okay. So what I want to leave you with today is this sort of no this notion that really there's value in creating masses that we can sort of very quickly start deforming and testing different configurations that we can get value out of the mass in terms of understanding numerically what's going on, and that we can use that mass ultimately to sort of create these shapes and really get a head start on doing our real building modeling. Because in terms of creating this building, I think you might sort of agree that, you know, I've just created sort of a shape of a 15-story building very, very quickly, you know, in a way that's a real head start as opposed to you having to create every individual floor level and then copy it on up. We can still take that and in every individual floor level, go to a specific floor level, look at the floor plan, and add things to it. I have a floor level. It has curtain walls. I can still go back and add things like walls and doors and windows and continue to customize it. But at a high level, I got myself started with a good form, and it's parametrically linked. So if later on it turns out that I need to cut 20% off the building, I can really quickly change the shape of the shell, understand what the impact is, and the model will update with it. So especially at the conceptual design stage, when you need quick answers to can I meet the program, this type of modeling is more useful to you as opposed to modeling every last door and window. Because you know, you're going to be negotiating about this overall. Do I have enough budget? Is it going to fit within the planning guidelines? 
You'll be talking about the overall shape first, and then you'll get down to that detailed modeling. Okay? Beauty, let's go ahead and adjourn there for today. When we come on back on Thursday, we will continue with all this and talk a little bit more about, given that we have masses, really, what can we do with them in terms of uh, getting some more performance data to help us make our design decisions?